So when you talk about people's all-time favorite 3D Zelda game, Twilight Princess is always in the conversation, and that is because Nintendo truly delivered on what fans were asking for, and a stark contrast in the change of style from what we saw with the Wind Waker when they returned to a darker, more realistic, grown-up Link and a grown-up tone in this game, and boy does it deliver on all fronts with dungeon exploration and story, and there are a ton of reasons to play this game if you haven't already, or to re revisit it as today we're talking about the reasons that I believe that we will see this title absolutely come out in the year of 2021 and be celebrated as part of Zelda's 35th anniversary. What's up nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunbro Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now guys, today we're continuing our discussion around the Zelda 35th anniversary titles that I am predicting to come out as part of this celebration. And while I know we don't have a lot to look forward to right now other than Skyward Sword HD and some information on Breath of the Wild 2 to be announced at this point, that's all we have officially. We have a lot of reasons to believe that Nintendo is going to go a lot further with Zelda's 35th anniversary and they were simply waiting for Mario's to finish before they're going to announce anything and my personal prediction as we get closer and closer to the dates that I think they can announce this stuff officially I am predicting that to take place probably in the months of the June and July window maybe even after Skyward Sword HD actually releases so they may push this back and actually turn it into a 2021 slash 2022 celebration the same way we saw them do with Mario that would not surprise me at all and I do think we're getting way more Zelda titles to come now this is amongst the most likely title that I think we can expect alongside the Wind Waker HD as these ports are both completed and to start off to show you guys some evidence that this is in the works there is a credible gaming journalist by the name of Andy Robinson who successfully predicted the Mario 3d collection title and he actually tweeted out a statement that says 100 percent Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD will be coming to the switch in 2021 so he was he said that after Skyward Sword HD got announced and a lot of fans were disappointed so this is again just something that is a rumor that's pointing towards Nintendo will do this and I think it makes a lot of sense for them because these games are already done now as far as why Twilight Princess should come to the switch to begin with well it's quite simply one of the best 3d Zelda experiences that you can have in the entire franchise and I do think that every Zelda fan needs to play through this game when it did come out there was a bunch of uh, split amongst the audience on people who really enjoyed this game and then other people obviously Obviously saw that it was heavily inspired by Ocarina of Time with the layout of the dungeons and how you progress through the game and they definitely did the base of work of what Ocarina of Time was but expounded upon it and took it to the next level and while some fans were not as much of a fan of that direction I personally think that this is one of the best 3d Zeldas out there and you absolutely have to go through it and experience it for yourself because if you like dungeon exploration guys this is probably second to none as far as the overall all experiences of the dungeons that you go through in this game and the unique items that you get like the link actually carries a chain ball in this game that he can launch at enemies through an ice dungeon which we hadn't really seen before and some of the unique puzzles that are in this game are amongst the top the desert dungeon where you get the spinning blade gear thing that is just incredible to ride through and some of the action that you have and especially the boss fight in that dungeon is absolutely incredible and there is just a bunch of reasons to play through this game it's also very story driven compared to most Zelda titles as the cutscenes are next level they feel very dark and very involved with you as the character and the decisions you make and so guys this is absolutely one of those Zelda titles that you have to play through yourself and now the thing is is that this was originally released on the GameCube and the Wii so it was a split title and it got delayed for about a whole year during its development to basically get it ready for the Wii because they didn't want to release it just at the very end of the GameCube's life cycle and so I'm willing to bet that a bunch of fans have only experienced this on one of those consoles and if you haven't experienced it on GameCube I actually personally think you haven't fully experienced the game in the way that the developers intended because what they had to do with the Wii version of the game was make it work with the motion controller and while it wasn't as precise as the Skyward Sword motion controls 
it was the same concept in the sense that you had to swing your sword in different directions and that's how link would swing them but it just didn't track the full 360 motion like skyward sword does and what they had to do to make that work in this game is actually do a mirror mode of the game on the wii version so everything is actually flipped in its original direction because most players are right-handed and they had to make that adjustment to get this game to work on the wii now when they re-released this in hd on the wii u it did not sell nearly as well because the wii u's install base was minimal i mean we're talking 10 million units total of the lifetime sales of the wii u the switch currently sits at 80 million and twilight princess hd actually only sold about 1.13 million copies so that is amongst the lowest zelda remaster sales that we've seen so far so there's a lot of people who missed out on this version of the game and if you've only played it on the wii you have to go back and experience it with the traditional controls and with everything facing the right direction and i do think that that while the hd visuals did it actually very it, it upgraded the game a lot i actually think that the visuals on the HD version of this game didn't even age quite as well as the Wind Waker. And while that doesn't really take away from the experience, it is just something that I was noticing as I was continuing to look through gameplay footage and things. And I think it's just because it's not a cell shaded title that you can see that this game has aged a little bit more, even in the HD edition. So I would be curious if Nintendo does bring this to the Switch, if they touch up the textures at all, because I think if they d d you know deliver just a little bit more detail on some of the textures that it could really pop and stand out. Now, when the changes that we saw to the Wii U version of this game, they did actually add in a number of things to kind of make it a little bit less grindy. The first of which was actually the Tears of Light uh, subquest that you have to go through when you first turn into Wolf Link. You used to have to collect 16 Tears of Light and a lot of, and that's in three different areas, and a lot of gamers did complain that that was a very, you know, grindy type of uh, side quest, and just before you can even get into the main gameplay of the game, you have to complete all that. They reduced those Tears of Light to about 12, so I'll be curious to see if they even drop them down further or if we stick with 12. I don't personally think we will see a lot of changes from the Wii U version already because it's pretty much done. You just have to port it to the Switch and revise the controls a little bit since the gamepad is not a thing anymore. But besides that, there's some other uh, really cool completionist style quests on this game if you guys are into that. So there's things like where you have to go collect gold bugs that are all scattered all around Hyrule and super hard to find. And then the Poe Souls used to be next to impossible to find on the original game but they did add in a ghost lantern to make that a little bit easier on the HD experience. You also have hero mode out of the gate that you can enable. And if you guys are down for a challenge, this is actually one mode that I would recommend enabling on this game because it just adds so much to the experience whenever you cannot replenish your hearts and enemies do double damage. They added in amiibo support, which I'll be curious to see if they actually carry forward because you could even, if you're really crazy, you could use your Ganondorf amiibo to actually do times four the damage on the Wii U version of the game so they've already put in a ton of work to this title it's going to be a super simple port and it'll sell amazing on the Switch as overall Zelda Twilight Princess is actually second only to Breath of the Wild when it comes to total lifetime sales as it sold over 9 million copies while it was available across the Wii and the GameCube and the HD re-release so I personally am predicting that we will see this title released, and I do think it will be at a standalone $60 price point. Now, there's a lot of division around whether or not we will see this in a double pack with Wind Waker, which is what I hope Nintendo does, but then knowing Nintendo and how they've handled every other uh, Wii U port, I am actually fully prepared to pay $60 as a standalone game for this because I do think they value Zelda at that. I mean, we got a, a literally a Game Boy remake in Link's Awakening, which was an original Game Boy title, and it was sold at $60, so I do think they do the same thing with a 60 to 70 hour plus adventure like what Twilight Princess HD is. So now the question is, is when are we going to see these things announced? And that's going to be the interesting thing is if we see both Wind Waker and Twilight Princess come out this year, how will they package that? Because I don't think they want to, you know, announce two separate $60 games at the same window. I think we see them broken up about three to six months apart. And so depending on if these games come out in 2021 or 2022, that remains to be seen either way i think that they you know i think zelda ends up kind of closing the anniversary with breath of the wild 2 as that's the brand new title but i think leading up until we see breath of the wild 2 announced we do get these extra games uh unveiled to us and hopefully sooner rather than later
The other really unique thing that Twilight Princess delivers when it comes to a gameplay perspective is actually something we really haven't seen since A Link to the Past, and that is a revisit in the same world, but in a totally different uh, overtone. So basically, you can go between the Twilight Realm and the regular realm, and you are fighting for both, not to spoil too much of the story, but you're basically going back and forth between those two realms, and it reminds me a lot of the Light World and Dark World in A Link to the Past, if you guys have played that on the SNES. So so there's a lot of reasons to dive into this title and then they have some crazy other challenges that they did add in with the Wii U version like the, uh, with the Wolf Link Amiibo if you have that you can actually unlock an entirely new Cave of Shadows which is similar to the Cave of Ordeals but gives you like a giant like the biggest wallet in the game if you make it through there but that's another 50 floor plus adventure that you know if you have if you're really down to try to tackle the hardest things that are in Zelda titles some of these like those the Cave of Ordeals and the Cave of Shadows are amongst the top. They're up there with Trial of the Sword in Breath of the Wild in terms of difficulty. So there's a lot of reason for fans to go back and re-experience this title. And I do think that, you know, if, if I were to grade it, I think the dungeon experience is absolutely the best of any Zelda title out there, 3D or 2D. It is my favorite when it comes to the unique dungeon styles and the items that are also in these games, like the, like the dual hook shots and everything that you can get from start to finish. I think that this one has to be played by all all major Zelda fans and while you know in in my heart I still think Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are probably my two all-time uh, favorite 3D Zeldas for for probably mainly nostalgia reasons at this point I think Twilight Princess expands upon what those games achieved as it has an up-close story driven uh, NPC portion of the game but also the big open world exploration and the dungeon conquering like what's in Ocarina of Time so guys I certainly hope we see this game come to fruition sooner rather than later and maybe we can you know finally relax and know that there's more Zelda on the way once Nintendo announces it for us but I would love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on what you think we're going to see with the rest of Zelda's 35th anniversary so please leave me a comment and tell me if you've played through Twilight Princess yet and what you're expecting um, as far as the pricing of this title if you think it'll be released as standalone or is it in a double pack and then also devote in today's community poll that I will have up on the channel discussing which game we think we will see and the pricing options of them. Thanks so much for watching the video today, everyone. I do truly appreciate you all sticking around until the end. I do at this point in the video want to invite you all one more time to join Sunburn Nation if you haven't done so already. Do so by subscribing below. Hit the like button on your way out on this video if you enjoyed it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. That's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you all have a great day. Sunburn Nation, out. <laughs>